there's a real problem in Trump world. And it starts with this guy. This is uh, uh, Larry uh, Bourbon on the Rocks with no rocks, Cudlow. This is uh, Foster Cudlow. I, 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 I remember. Um, Foster Cudlow here um, is, is my eye twitching. No, it's comedy twitching. So, calm down. Yeah. Um, and he uh, is, uh, he's saying, are we really saying... See, they're they're in a real pro they have a real problem over at Fox Business because people make money when the economy makes money and the guys around them want to make money so they don't want to be bullshitted Fox News style about the economy on Fox Business they if they want to hear bullshit political nonsense that has nothing to do with reality they can go to Fox but if they hear it on Fox Business and they make a an investment decision based on some of this shit um, they get tr real fucking trouble. And the Cudlows of the world, I mean, he got into the White House because he tells it, tells it like it is. So, Folks, we are going to pivot with the speed of light. We're going to pivot. We're going to talk about today. Away from Jonathan Turley, who knows fuck all about the law. Apparently. His GDP report. What was it? U.S. GDP grows at 4.9% annualized rate in quarter three. Ouch. Ouch. 4.9%, almost 5%. Oh, fucking Biden and his commie growth. You grow. Oh. We have Liz Peek, syndicated columnist. And ah, fuck. She, she looks happy. Liz Peek Anger. Fox News contributor. We have Jason Trenner. Womp, womp. Chairman and CEO of Strategus Securities. And we have St Strategus. Brian Brenberg, co-host of The Big Money Show, right here on Fox Business. Hi, it's big money. Thanks, this is my one shot. I'm on Cudlow. I want your job, Larry. Okay, my lickety split, fast, top line. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe it for one fucking second. I don't believe it. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. I mean, I talked to my accountant yes, yesterday and my investments were up, but I don't believe it. Number, big number. Big number. Under the hood. Lots of problems for the f uh, lo lots of problems under in the in in the hood a place I I don't go future numbers Liz Peak I will let you start yeah big number but by the way with the two trillion dollar uh, deficit running it, it should be a big number uh, I see so the the argument being here from uh, this lovely lady who looks like a woman who hired someone to murder someone on an old Law and Order episode. Um, and and we give to the Met every year, but we never go because I don't like. Ever since they put the Maplethorpe stuff in there, I'm just afraid to see a bullwhip in someone's ass and not get paid for it. But um, this this lady is like the government uh, did a, you know put a lot of money into the uh, into the like into the economy with this two trillion dollar you know uh, budget, this deficit they put forward, their deficit spending on these kind of things, and this money is raising GDP. And they're like, fuck, it's, the, maybe the government does create jobs. Shit. What's under the hood is continued pretty high level of inflation. Continued pretty high level of inflation. Continued pretty high. Okay, hold on one second. Let me show you the people that this woman hates. You, you fucking morons. Hold on one second. Get out of here. Go away. Go away. This lady, this lady, she, she hates you. U.S. consumers keep spending briskly, even in the face of persistent inflation and high interest rates. You fucking assholes. Don't you realize you're supposed to cower and break down? Don't you realize that you're supposed to look at the money you have and go, oh yeah, it goes far enough for me to do that. I can do that. And you're not supposed to, you're supposed to, to go, ah, ah, no, I'm not going to eat cat food for everybody. Cat food for everybody. A woman shops at a, in a Target store in Upper St. Clair, PA. On Friday, an inflation gauge that is closely monitored by the Fed showed price increases remain elevated in September amid brisk consumer spending and strong economic growth. An inflation gauge that is closely monitored, it's the PPI or C, uh, whatever, um, 
Friday's Sport Commerce Department showed that prices rose 0.4% from August to September. The same as the previous month. And compared to 12 months earlier, inflation was unchanged at 3.4%. It's not double what it should be, but it's a point and a half higher. It's less than a point and a half higher than, than the magic number. Post-COVID, as if these motherfuckers. I don't. I got Lower real disposable income for, I think, the third month in a row, which... What, what do you think they're spending? Imaginary disposable income? Which does not augur well for consumer spending. And that's really kind of... And yet consumer spent... What I just show you? Uh, that's from yesterday. What we're looking for going forward. And by the way, finally, uh, a big, big... <laughs> Look at the fucking... <laughs> Boy, do they hate these green arrows. Fuck you, green arrows! Big increase in government spending, as we've seen the last couple of months. And that is something that is really pulling, pushing this economy forward. A third of the increase. Is it pulling it or is it pushing it? I think it's pulling it more than it's pushing, but it's hard to say. Increase, by the way, for this number was from inventory accumulation, mm -hmm. about a third of it. That's not sustainable. But Jay <laughs> Inventory accumulation and it's not sustainable. Hey, asshole. Um, what three major U.S. holidays are we staring down the fucking barrel of that require inventory accumulation so that you can do Black Friday. And uh, you, you think ha Halloween City is raising their fucking inventory? Listen, you know. So stupid. Like, there's there's a rise in inventory this time every fucking year. Um, your guy, Dan Clifton, have been writing, because of the debt ceiling debate, where they had to postpone the final debt ceiling uh, authorization, you know, for an increase. The Treasury ran down the right. Treasury cash balances. I don't know. I won't get too much into that, but it's kind of... Yeah, get into it, though. Explain it. Like the Federal Reserve, the Treasury can create money in the short run. They basically injected five or six hundred billion right. dollars into the economy. Five or six hundred billion dollars into the economy. No, they had to front load some of the stuff because of the debt ceiling increase fight so that stuff would have money on reserve to pay for stuff if they didn't do it late last spring this is again all that money injected into the economy you can blame republicans if you have a problem with which i think went right into consumer spending in the third quarter absolutely fucking consumers man you guys stop consuming so you actually the stop going to fucking taylor swift concerts and football games jesus christ don't you realize the stands should be empty right now america's in hell in hell, this is hell, and in, in this is the this is tube hell, which sounds naughty. So it's a phony. It's a it's, a, it's like a it's a, almost like a hoax. It's almost like a hoax. Double-barreled dose of stimulus after Silicon Valley Bank failed. Uh, the Fed's balance sheet increased by four hundred billion in about three weeks after Silicon Valley Bank failed. And, and then it went back down. And then because you weren't issuing new treasuries, you drew down all of the cash. What I say. I, I, I could have, I, I could, uh, I don't even drink and I could get drunk and be a guest on Fox Business and be more right than these dickheads. Reserves mm -hmm. of the Treasury Department, mm -hmm. which is another 600 mm -hmm. billion. And so it's not surprising in a way uh, that, um, that you have strong growth. I would say, though, avoiding a, a recession at all costs, which seems to be what Janet Yellen and everyone else in the administration wants to do. Gee, I, I, and when will they learn that recessions are good for the economy because people lose their jobs when that happens? Has a cost. This is, ah. Uh, let, me, let me take you back. Hey, maggots, psh, 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 come back. I know you were, many of you were leaving. Come here. Come here for a second. Settle down. Um, but remember that whole talk about last year and, quite frankly, the year before and about every three fucking months where, uh, Everybody from Glenn Beck to this fuckhead to Donald Trump, we're telling you there's a recession. We're in a recession. It's already a recession. The recession has happened and there's a recession and we're and the recession's coming any day now. Fucking in, any day now. It's a recession and it would be horrible and it would be horrible. It would be horrible if the Biden administration allowed a recession to happen because it's going to happen because of them. They're causing the recession. A recession. The recession is here and it's already here and it's in. And it's, you we're playing just the tip with the recession. But uh, they lied, and that's not that. That's your thumb, not your pinky, and you need to clip your nails because goddamn it, the recession is here and it's up my keister. <laughs> and um, this is getting weird, really weird, too fast. But they, remember that argument. Remember all that shit. 
Remember all that back and forth? Da-da? Okay. Um, uh, and then the recession didn't happen. And now, I want you to listen again to what this dumb motherfucker just said about a recession. Which seems to be what Janet Yellen and everyone else is advising in a way uh, that, um, that you have strong growth. I would say, though, avoiding a, a recession at all costs, which seems to be what Janet Yellen and everyone else the administration wants to do, has a cost. And that cost is inflation. And that's... Because when people have more money, people who sell and make things can charge more money for that money, you know, mo charge more for their items with that money. And then it stabilizes over time because there's a ceiling on what you're willing to pay psychologically for a pair of jeans or some shit like that. And then it has to come down and then mix in Black Friday, mix in, uh, you know, uh, fucking Cyber Monday, mix in post Christmas sales and, and you get a evening out of the inflationary pressures on goods, it, even in a non-post-COVID year that lowers the cost of consumer goods across the board everywhere. Even if you pay 40 bucks for a pair of jeans in the spring and you're paying 15 for them in the fall, the, but those two pairs of jeans are a fucking wash. It's, 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 it's the laundress mats. It's the laundress mats. I, I, I fear that if this conversation gets any worse, we're going to have to worry about the kidney. But I hope not. Why I, I'm of the view that this is going to be harder. It's going to be harder to put the genie back in the bottle than perhaps. Uh, here, here's a good idea, Mr. Big Eye. What uh, defined putting the genie back in the bottle is. Because it sounds a lot like putting the lotion on its skin and then it puts the, the lotion in the basket. Perhaps the Fed and others in the markets think that inflation. So let me get this straight. The Fed and the markets are at odds with the White House that has a different uh, set of priorities than, say, the Fed directly. Well, uh, during the entire Trump administration, Donald Trump was fighting the Fed because he believed we should have negative interest rates, which is fucking bananas. And you didn't have a problem with him doing that. You, you just figured that they fought each other. That's just how it should be. Now that they're not fighting and Biden is just going, the Fed has to set its standard and we've got to compensate in any way we can to make sure that they don't crash us into a recession while they're trying to even out the money supply post COVID, then that's how, it, that's just how it goes. And we're going to have to expand growth like crazy. So we have enough revenue, uh, revenue to pay down the debt with this expanded interest rate. We'll be more structural moving forward because we are running. Really? You don't say. You do say. I say. What? Deficits of five and a half percent of GDP. PCE deflator, the core deflator. Well, that guy just faded up. Deflator core, ha ha ha. It's up 3.9 percent. You're still running 3 or 4 percent inflation. Brian Brenberg, President uh, Biden. You, no, you're running 3.4. Biden, Treasury. Not 3 or 4. Nice try, Larry. Fuck you. Secretary Yellen says our problems are solved. Yeah, they're not supply siders. That's the problem. They look at this number and they say, oh my goodness, 4.9. Gee, it's almost like they re represent the demand side, meaning the fucking public. 9% because it's built on all of this deficit and debt spending. It's not income driven. Real incomes are not rising. People are dipping into their savings. And to buy goods that they think are worth it, even at that price. Explain yourself. That's what they can feel. They know, like they can say at a high level, oh, the economy grew, but at an individual level, people say, I know what I'm paying for things and I know where I got the money and I don't like where I'm going for the money right now. This summer was a blowout spending summer, but it was. <laughs> people put it on credit cards and then paid it down later because that's how you do fucking vacations when you can finally take a fucking vacation after fucking COVID, you fucking tool. 
a services spending summer. Laser. A services spending summer. People didn't buy stuff. They went and did shit. Gee, it's almost like we're a couple of years away from total fucking lockdown where families didn't get to take uh, a vacation. And then after that, there was another year with Delta in it as people got inoculated against it where they couldn't take a vacation. And then there was a fucking Ukraine war and the cost of oil spiking for a while that maybe killed their summer plans. And this year they're like, fuck it, I don't care. Larry, and that is, that is buy now, Taylor Swift. pay later, or oh, maybe Taylor pay Swift. never. He fucking said it. He's fucking said Taylor Swift. Larry Kudlow, listen. Larry, Larry and Swift. that is, that is buy now, Taylor Swift. pay Taylor Swift. You fucking assholes that went and saw Taylor Swift, you fucking Swifties, uh, are ruining the economy. Ah, uh, how dare you? How dare you enjoy yourself this summer? By the way, consumer debt is really low compared to other times in history that aren't even post-pandemic. Pay later or maybe pay never. I, I think 3%. Maybe pay never. I see. So they're going to get... You don't, you don't think these people are going to get bankruptcies. Those are only for the Trump class. Tennis points go to the Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> you you would know, Larry. Seriously. You're the fan here. I'm the only one in the building that hasn't been to the Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> and I don't intend to go. No, Look at that. I'm the only person in the building, ha ha ha, that's been to a Taylor, that, that hasn't been to a Taylor Swift concert. That means everybody working at Fox who's telling you every fucking day the, that the United States is in hell, the economy is fucked up, consumers are dying and they hate everything. Everybody that works at Fox News and Fox Business has gotten Taylor Swift fucking tickets. Bullshit! The fucking fuckity fuck. <sighs> Unbelievable. Uh, now she's hooked up with a football player from one of the teams that I dislike the most, so I sure as hell aren't going to go. Liz Pika, I want to come back to the inflation. Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, asshole, your fuckability rating is so goddamn low, no one cares. You know, if you take out enough categories of inflation, you can get low inflation, right? That's what Paul Krugman <laughs> right, does. Right, he right. took out. So I talked to a great pal of mine. I'm not going to name his name because I'm responsible for the editorial part of this. But Lord of oh, fucking name his name, you fucking coward. I said, OK, I want you to take out everything but food and energy. Leave food and energy in. Take out everything else in the inflation index. So in the third quarter, that was up 6.6% .6 at an annual rate. It, yeah, because of energy, because the Saudis cut production, not because it doesn't exist, not because of any U.S. policy at all. If anything, it's because they don't like our, our support of democracy worldwide. Fuck them. I got news for you, dummy. The cost of energy as we experience it because the cost of energy overall in Europe has gone up because Russia being eliminated from it. The processed fuel through India from Russia even raises the price higher. It's steadying out at about $86 a barrel, somewhere around there. It's never going to hit 150 like they've been saying it's at it's while they've been clamoring for a fucking recession. These lying pieces of shit. But you, you play this long game of electric cars and chargeable cars, and you take that 20% of commuter cars out of the petroleum business, we're not even having this fucking conversation about energy as a part of inflation ever again. Ever. My logic is very simple here. Thank you. Food and Mr. energy is what people buy. Thanks, Staff Chat. Buy yeah. gasoline, groceries, okay? 6.6% .6 of the annual. Yeah, what's groceries? You got to add energy to it because you know that it's being directly manipulated. Right. People should do this exercise. Take out every other bloody thing. Be and you'll recognize that most of this is petroleum, fossil fuels, which I have news for you, are a dwindling resource that is finite. And eventually it will only be used for like kerosene for airplanes, like uh, jet fuel and uh and diesel for old trucks in in africa and south america largely until they make this transition which will take a long decades multiple decades but it's gonna as it get as it gets lower and lower in use it will get more and more expensive as a fuel source because nobody's gonna fucking make it anymore 
Look at... Uh, Eat them at their own game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that's right. And frankly, if you add it in housing, it would also be... Not, yeah. Um, that uh, is a, an aspect of Texas and Florida. Nationwide, Texas and Florida, the price of living in both those states has gone up so fucking much that it is literally spiked everywhere else. I'm kind of I'm not gonna touch I know, I know, I know. But that and New York. Why do people keep wanting to live in New York even if the prices go up? What the fuck? D don't you, didn't, aren't you listening to Donald Trump? You should be leaving New York. Kills those, my are model. Things, those, <laughs> those are the things that people feel, and that's what they're reacting to. Yes. It has an impact on consumer sentiment, has an impact on spending, I think, going forward. I mean, you know, some of the best economists on Wall Street are saying we're at a turning point, and you can see it in the employment data, uh, in the auto delinquencies, delinquencies on consumer debt, mm -hmm. that we really are getting to the end of this big consumer bubble that you were just talking about. Yep. Consumers can't go on spending forever. The, the savings rate came down to 3.8, I think, in this last quarter. Right. Way lower than it was earlier in the year. It Way lower than it was earlier in the year. People took their savings and they spent it on summer vacations. And then they refill the fucking... Oh, God. Can't go on well, forever. I, I would say this. Um, you still have an inverted yield curve. It's been inverted now for a while. That suggests uh, the New York Fed model, 60% chance of recession next right. year. You still have 18. You fucking wish 60% chance of next year. Next year? Next year? Fucking say next year again, motherfucker. Say next year again. Straight. Weren't we already in a recession and through a recession and had another recession and then there's another one right around the fucking corner? Months of declining index of leading indicators. Now it's down big. I, w I, would, I wouldn't diss that. Now, Jason. Yeah, I wouldn't diss that, homie. Come on. Stocks battled itself today. Samuel L. Cupcake. Is that his name now? It might. That's a good one. I like Salty Cupcake, but Samuel L. Cupcake is pretty good. Okay, but wound up down again. The NASDAQ is in a very, very mean correction. And oh, it's in a very mean correction. And it might not have anything to do with the fucking uh, tech costs of moving um, chip making and, and electronics manufacturing out of China because of fucking slave labor. I'm gonna. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> Let's see. For uh, this, let me let me show you the stock market. If you're in it for the year, um, uh, the stock market is up 384 points this year. A lot of a lot of chop in there. You can see a lot of chop, right, in that. But if you look at it for the month, it's down. If you look at it for the week, it's down. If you look at it for the day, it's down. It's almost the exact same fucking thing. But if you look at it for the year, it's up. It's up. So if you just put your shit in and sat, sat on your money, you'd have been fine. If you listen to this fuckwad, you'd have pulled it out. Ooh, that sounds dirty. Okay, now let's go back to the NASDAQ. Where is the NASDAQ composite? Uh, there you go. NASDAQ composite. Okay, there we go. It's very nasty. Very nasty. It's up. But it's a nasty kind of an up. You know? I don't like this. No, I don't want to add this to my advice. No, thank you. Um, oh, it's just terrible. How about five days? Oh, that's down five days. It's up one day. It's going back up. Bink. Five days in a month. Oh, this is the correction. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like how it moves. That's good. Three. Year to date, it's up. Yeah. This is the part. This is the fucking part. Like, this, this is where you act like... Um, if there's a kitchen fire in one restaurant in New York City, that all the kitchens in New York that have stoves are on fire currently. This is the fallacy that he's trying to push. Ugh. So, anyways. The failure of Bidenomics. Fuck you. And the mortgage rate is running over 8%. The mortgage rate is running over 8%. If you want a mortgage, it's going to cost you 8%. Now, my parents bought the house I grew up in at 19%.
and it drove the cost of the house down so much that when they were able to refinance from a high level, when it went down to like 10%, they saved a shit ton of money because the house couldn't be that expensive because the, the interest rate was high. And it was the builders and the people who sold the house that were making the money instead of the banks that were lending the money. And that's why bond yields and blah blah blah. I think the, the best leading indicator, as we've talked about, is profits. Uh oh, it's down 0.76%. And, and profits are lower this year mm -hmm. than they were last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Um, what's surprising? Gee, it's almost like labor costs are going up because people's wages are going up. But you call them real wages because you're, they got a bunch of bonuses to go to work, and then they got a bonus to stay at work, which is effectively becoming real wages. All the people who work as executives. Remember the storyline in um, Christmas Vacation where they were counting, he was counting on his, uh, his like bonus to put in the pool and he'd already pay, he put down a down payment on it and all that kind of stuff. That's a real wage increase. It just comes in a bonus form. So that they don't have to, when they have new employees, they don't have to tell them that the salary is $50,000 higher than it actually is. But they give them a bonus to come in. And then if they're thinking about leaving, they give them a bonus to stay, right? That's how this, that's how that system works. On an executive level, that happens all the time. It's now working at like a middle management level at a fucking Chili's. That's what they're upset about. And that's why they're like, not real wages. I mean, it's money and these people are getting it and they're spending it and they have it. But it's not real is that the employment picture has held up well. I think that explains to a certain extent why uh, consumer spending has been better. But there yeah, the fucking, you guys, you keep working. There's only so long companies are going to hoard workers or hoard labor after. Yeah, you can't hoard workers and hoard labor. I mean, the whole goal has to be make, you know, as much money on their backs as possible. And if you have a bunch of these companies trying to, you know, balance between the two. Hmm period of mm -hmm. finding it difficult to find them before they start to say, gee, we have to take care of our own profits. And to me, that's the best leading indicator of all. It's the mother's milk of economic growth, as you said. Mother's milk of stocks, right. the lifeblood of the economy. And Brian, I'm going to give you the left. The economy. That's where Jason. Did he say e -commy? That sounds like a site for communists who buy and sell stocks. It's on in this. Um, business investment fell Bingo. again. Business Bingo. investment's been down two of the last three quarters. Yep. Now, the Bidens like that because they hate business. <laughs> Is that what it is? Is that why? Is that why the businesses are doing as well as they are? All right. So why not crush it? But Brian Brenberg, I always thought it was business success that created the wherewithal for jobs and the economy. Apparently not, because apparently they are investing. Here's what I. Here's what we really realize is that Larry Kudlow does not think you invest in employees that employees are part of the business investment, investing in the people that work for you, that you have trained to do the job or that you want to grow within the company so you can pick executives and stuff from the body of workers there who know the fucking job and know it very well. What an ass. And consumer spending. The problem is we've got the cart before the horse. Yeah. No, the problem is you guys have this whole thing backwards and cannot recognize that you are trying to feed your carrot to the wrong side of the horse. It's big time right now. And the horse is saying, I don't want to pull anymore. I'm pulling. Yeah, Larry will pull I'm it back. Mm -hmm. I'm out. I don't like this environment. So you can go on clapping about 4.9%, but you better enjoy it now because as the consumer. Yes, I agree. Enjoy it now, folks. Consumer runs out of steam. The businesses have already said, I'm out until I get a policy that actually works That's for right. us. And it's. Oh, that's it. So this is this is his argument, is that businesses are so fucking Republican that until Washington kisses their ass and starts throwing them another permanent tax cut, which is still in place, until they get that, they're going to not, I'm not even going to fucking grow my company. Fuck it. What's the point? I mean, I don't even know why. I mean, <laughs> there's money to be made and I have competitors who will grow because they're smaller and you can grow with less now and I'm competing against it, but ah, fuck it. I'm phoning it out. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Not happening under Biden right, right. now. Absolutely right. Um, Absolutely right. It's so, so, so true. I, like, one of the things that's <laughs> happening under Cudlow right now is a diaper full of soup. So, um... <laughs>
You're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Like, subscribe, share the show. We're almost at 58k. Are we there yet? Are we? At, what are, are we? Gonna, what's our current state of of craziness? Hold on one second. You and the tube, and we'll check up on our our network there. Um, oh, also, uh, let's see. Uh, no, no, no. I don't need that. Let me go. Go to your channel. Go to that. We are at uh, 57.9. We're so close to 58K. Subscribe, kids. Subscribe to the channel. It's really going to help.